Well hello everybody and welcome to this introduction to Flash CS5 Professional. I'm Michael O'Grady and we're going to have a look at the interface. When you open it up it probably defaults to Essentials. Um, having used Flash for quite a while I'm going to change that to Classic. It puts the buttons, uh, the tools on the left uh, which we're going to have a look at shortly. It puts the timeline at the top. This is where we have our frames, which run at uh, defaults to 24 frames a second. We can have as many layers as we want. Let's just change the name of this. We'll just double click it and put in graphics. And then we'll change that to graphics as we normally see it. And down here, the white area in the grey is the screen size. It's normally 550 by 400. We can change this here. Let's put it back to 400 wide. And we can change the colour. It's usually white. We can change it to any colour that we want. We can zoom in and out uh, as we want. Um, a good one is fitting window and then as we move this dividing pane we get the movie to grow or reduce as we want but everything's in proportion and we always get access to our content which is um, quite useful in some areas. Up here on the right are the properties and uh, library, there's nothing in the library at the minute. The properties are context sensitive and these panels come from the window drop down. You can see these are open but we can also get actions um, a line, colour and info panels and others that we might want to use. Also on the left the file save, open recent, save as, um, import and export uh, options and publish settings are all there as well as you'd expect. The tools then are they look like Photoshop and Firework tools and they largely do the same sort of things. We have two selection tools. Um, let's just draw a rectangle to start off with and show you the difference between these two tools. Go to the main uh, selection tool and if we click the fill once it becomes selected. If we double click it we select the fill as well. If we click the outline once we select just one area and if we double click the we get the whole outline and once these things are moved uh, are selected we can move them okay we can move them independently so this one rectangle is in fact made up of four uh, lines and one fill and we can alter them uh, independently so we'll just control z back to the beginning and we'll put a, a line here a straight line and now we've got as we'll see, 11 individual items. Just by single clicking, we can divide all these up into separate items. And there's 11 of them. And Flash, being a vector-based package, recreates the coordinates, the, the control points, um, so that it, it's cutting things down to make new objects. If we hover over the... Uh, edge of a line away from the corners we get access to these bezier points um, or bezier curves and we can also select individual coordinates to change those. So we just have a little dish or a right angled um, profile underneath the, the cursor. If we go into the subselection tool, rather like on Fireworks and Illustrator, we get access to the coordinates and the Bezier handles themselves. And like Fireworks and Illustrator, if we press Alt, the modifier key, we can break the back of that uh, of the individual Bezier lines uh, at will. We can drag around individual coordinates to select them, or we can just click the coordinate. Dragging around is quite uh, useful. We can use the up and down, left and right arrow keys to move individual pixels, or if we press shift, they move 10 at a time, which is very useful for, for big movement. So let's just delete that by double clicking and pressing delete. The 3D World Rotation and Translation tool um, We'll look into that in another video. It's quite advanced, but we can make things look like they're sort of in a 3D world with perspective, uh, etc. So let's just have a look at the lasso tool uh, on this rectangle. We can delete, move, recolor selections that are from the lasso tool. And it intuitively selects the areas that we'd expect it to select.
So let's just get rid of that and go to the Bezier pen. There are four tools in here. Uh, the pen tool itself is the Bezier pen tool. We're just clicking and dragging and then hovering over the, the start to snap onto the end and we get that Bezier pen tool there. So if we go back to the, the pen, we can add a point, a coordinate in there just by clicking on the line. And then we can manipulate that by going to the subselection tool selecting that using the arrows to move it or the cursor to move the handles. We can also go to delete an anchor point. We can click on one to delete and we can also select one, um, drag around and then press delete to get rid of that as well. And we can also use the, let's go back, we can also use the convert anchor point to convert Bezier handles to take them out so we have straight lines or if we click and drag we put the Bezier handles back in. So it's a toggle switch. Take them off, drag and add them back. This is a closed object as you'll see. There's no uh, gap in the outline and so if we go to the paint bucket tool you'll see the paint chip is brown. We can just add brown and if we change that colour find something different and just click in there with the paint bucket tool. We can't do that if the um, object is open. Okay, So we can get our colours from left, bottom left and top right. So let's have a look at our straight line tool and we'll just have a look at that uh, open versus closed object. So if we manage to close our object inaccurately or make our object would not be enclosed, we can push it back and you see these IntelliGuides appearing. So that's now snapped onto there. And as we draw a line, it will snap onto the ends if we're close enough. Okay, so let's try and fill this object now with uh, some paint, the light blue. I'm clicking there and it won't fill. So what I have to do is close the object. Um, I can move the line or I can just grab the end and drag it. You see it snapping. And if we fill now, it fills. So let's get rid of that and have a look at uh, text. We'll put the pen tool back to where it was. The text, we drag out a, a dotted rectangle, which is a, a minimum height dependent on the text we put in. And then we just tap away at the text. It uses the text, the fonts, the size, the colours uh, from which it was last used. And so here's my uh, last rehearsal of this strange font. So let's just select all of that and change it to something more suitable. Um, blank Gothic. Uh, we can drag this box, make it larger. Uh, our world has disappeared. So we can uh, highlight the text within. We can change uh, individual selected elements of size. Or we can just select the whole box and change the size that way. So we can do it from within or without. We can change the colour uh, globally. Or we can select a small portion of the text and change the colour like so. We've got uh, alignment and justification um, and sort of margin, align spacing and all sorts of things down here. And you can either double click in these or just uh, hover over and then click and drag. Move left or right and it moves the values accordingly. Spacing is before and after. Uh, paragraphs and we've got word spacing, letter spacing, etc. Tracking is quite useful by uh, narrowing off selections, making them wider or narrower, uh, arranging the gaps in between, which can be quite a nice effect. So we might want to change or decouple our font from the font itself. So if we go to modify and break apart, we can now break apart individual letters from the the words. And if we want to further change them, let's go in here and just zoom out 400%. If you want to say change that Q, you'll see it's still linked to the font. We can go to break it apart for a second time. And now it's a series of lines and fills and we can control the coordinates. We can control the curvature of the lines, etc. So if I wanted this stock to be, uh, say, yellow, I can just drag uh, a box around it. 
a little larger perhaps, take all of it in, just select the uh, area and go to a different colour and we can change it to yellow. Okay, and then go back to uh, fit in window. So it's quite a nice way of getting uh, custom fonts and custom names for um, entities, etc. So let's have a look at the pencil tool. Um, it just does what it says. You can change the colour. Um, this is actually the line. Uh, we've got a modify down here. We can go to straighten, smooth or ink. Um, straighten makes it more angular, smooth, more rounded and ink gives you exactly what you, you drew. Well, more or less what you drew. <laughs> so let's get rid of that. The paintbrush, uh, the brush tool, it draws, it doesn't draw a line, it draws paint fill. So you can see here, we can't control the stroke, uh, we, and then there is no stroke, so it's all fill. <coughs> this uh, red line through shows that there is no stroke, so it's all fill. The spray brush creates a spray of width and height. Um, we can spray objects. There's nothing in the library, so we're just spraying dots. The spray head, we can control the size of, and the black up here is the, the colour. And it follows spray um, as follows our mouse. So if we change a different colour, it just puts dots. The slower we go, the more dots it puts. Uh, if we reduce the spray head size, then the same amount of dots are put in a smaller area. And you can see it's quite wide going down and it's quite narrow going across. Uh, this is to do with the brush angle. We can get a sort of calligraphy uh, effect going on. So let's just get rid of that. There is something called a deco tool and we're allowed to, to basically paint patterns. These are preset patterns. Uh, you'll see this is the default grapevine. We've got uh, a grid fill. The grid fill allows us here when we're finished with the grapevine. I probably have to delete it. Let's just control Z, go back and then go back to the deco tool. We can set the colors of the grids, the spacing, the shape. Okay, so this is the, the default. Control Z to go back. We've got other things like skyscrapers. Um, it draws a section, but we can drag up, and when we get to the top, it puts a, a top in there. We could put these into individual graphic symbols, which we'll be looking at later, and we can increase or reduce the size of these and give to, to give us a, a, a skyscape some perspective. And we've got different skyscrapers that we can control. The inverse kinematics or bone tool allows us to put bones in objects, which is a little advanced for where we're going today. So uh, don't touch that one. So let's have a look at um, using the eraser. So we've got a, a shape which we can just intuitively erase things. So we'll control Z out of there and put some colour into the fill. Let's put this dark green. I've inadvertently locked the paint colour, which is this button here. Uh, it allows you to lock the fill, so let's just unlock it and uh, change the colour to something different so we can see that. And then the eraser, we've got different uh, options here. We can just erase, it, it straightens out our content. We can choose the shape and the size. There's a few off stage here, but there's different sizes round and rectangular. Um, okay, let's go to a big one. Uh, the fill, we can uh, erase just fill, so it leaves our lines. We can erase lines, so we can just go through this and it leaves the fill, gets rid of the lines. Not that visible on the top, but down the bottom and the side, you can just see it. And we can also erase, um, you can can't quite see but it's erase selected. So what we're going to do is select this area here and then go back to erase erase selected and it goes through the unselected but when we let go it's still there and we only select the area only raise the selected items. So let's get rid of that.
draw a rectangle and I'll show you finally just changing colors. If you go to the color picker on the colors you get this very useful gradation which allows you to take a color from the same colorway and to extend it uh, either make it darker or lighter. So that's our movie. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. You've learned a lot about the tools. We've missed a few out there which I'll catch up in later movies. The next movie we're going to look at graphic symbols and make um, buttons. We'll